All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Saul Marquez, who is actually on the other side of the country, actually off the coast in the Caribbean in Puerto Rico. How are you doing, Saul? It's uh, doing, doing great, John. Thanks so much for having me here. Yeah, and Saul is a prominent figure in healthcare digital marketing, serving as the founder and CEO of Outcomes Rocket, a global digital marketing agency that helps tech uh, or health technology companies that struggle to get customers or don't have enough customers to scale the business. Over 20 years experience working with uh, and working for major players like Stryker, Nuvasive and Medtronic. And you also host the Outcomes Rocket podcast, uh, the daily show. So that's for, for entrepreneurs and hospital CEOs. And so what we're going to talk about today is improving closing ratios with the three pillars of digital marketing. So, um, so Saul, first of all, just give me, give me a little bit of uh, a state of the union about digital marketing today. Like, you know, uh, just for people who, who maybe are kind of think they understand digital marketing, but not maybe don't understand it to, to a great degree. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, John. And, and, uh, look, uh, uh it, it, when you're doing digital marketing, I imagine your, your audience is mainly sales. Am I, am I correct in that? Yeah, yeah, but we have marketing folks as well. Yeah, sales and marketing. Okay, yeah. Look, the the state of the of the marketing union, is, a digital marketing union, is this. Um, it it while things have changed and channels have changed, like TikTok has become more of a more of a platform for for us to leverage video and reach out to people. YouTube continues to grow. Uh, while these things will shift internally. There, what everybody can rely on is that there will always be consistency in the three pillars of marketing, and those are owned, earned, and paid. And there's ways for all of us to 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 really have a good understanding of where we sit within each one of those. If anybody tells you that it's complicated, they're trying to sell you something. <laughs> it's yeah. actually quite quite simple. Excellent. All right. Well, um, let's get let's get straight into it then. Uh, let's start talking about the the three pillars. So let's talk about the the first pillar. Absolutely. So let's jump into owned and and what yeah. we focused on here is is really the message to everybody listening and watching is you can fast track your sales if if you're hitting on all cylinders on these. And by the way, you could probably fast track some sales and lower your cost of acquisition. If you're hitting it hard on one and doing it mm -hmm. really well and complementing it with a second. So you don't even have to be hitting all three. Right. So with owned marketing, I'll, I'll share with you guys. I, I, I you know, started off working at large medical device companies mm -hmm. and I, I made the decision to leave the corporate gig to start my, my own agency because you know I, I felt a calling. 50% of all businesses fail within five years. 97% mm -hmm. uh, fail within 10 years. The number one reason they fail is because of lack of product demand. Yep. Um, Pipeliner takes care of this, right? Like you guys are helping people stay organized, yep. helping them move their deals through. And, and, and if you're thinking about how to leverage a CRM like Pipeliner with your marketing efforts, it's really quite simple. Uh, on the own side of the marketing, it's your website. It's your content that you're pushing through your social media channels. And, and, and it's your email. I mean, those are, those are really like the three main pillars within the, the owned side of the marketing theme. Mm -hmm. I would tell you this, it's very likely that you're not doing the most you could do with your email list. And, 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 and the way, the way, the place you should start right now is taking a look at that list. And you might be saying, I'm not doing anything with my list. That's okay. Take a look at your existing customers, people that have bought from you. Mm -hmm segment that list into people that haven't bought from you six months from now, people that have bought from you yesterday, and start with that list. Start being intentional about your outreach to them. Track all of those uh, outreach messages, open rates that you're going to be understanding, and, and, and use your CRM to understand who's engaging with your content. That becomes a lead generation funnel for your sales team to reach out to, call on, and, and, and grow the business with. 
Yeah, and I and I think uh, Saul, there it's also you know different messages for different audiences, right? Because uh, I think sometimes you know we default into this one one message fits all, you know, the sort of email marketing campaigns, it's just blasted out to everybody. But segmenting, segmenting your your list and really targeting it and targeting different messages is obviously um is obviously a far better way to go. Oh, it is. And and you know what, John? Uh, I you're one thousand percent right. And I'm gonna share with you your audience a secret that if they start doing it now, they'll have success. And by the way, I mean, the secret is not mass emails. The secret is <laughs> focus on your top targets where you're going to get the highest growth and do stuff that doesn't scale. How You could, however, make it very personalized and, 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 and make templates. And I'll give you one trick that you could do today that will lead to more higher value sales calls. And this is it. So figure out your, your top 25 to 50 opportunities and those opportunities, do a Google search and then click on the, the little news section of, of Google. When you click on news, you could see if anything relevant has popped up in a company's mm -hmm. history. Create a template that says, hey, I, I noticed that X. And that's where you're going to include that yep. thing that happened. Put it in an Excel spreadsheet, copy paste for all of your 50 contacts. You could templatize this, reach out. Guess what? That email, while it's now a template, it's very personalized yep. to this particular contact. The likelihood that they're going to get back to you is so much higher. We're doing this ourselves. We're mm -hmm. doing it with clients. And, and it doesn't fail, John, like whenever we yeah. do this. Clients are amazed. They're like, holy shit, like we're, we're getting hits. We're getting calls because it's personalized. Yeah. And, and the one thing that I just think to be people to be careful of, you I mean, you're saying you did this work yourselves, but be careful because, you know, there's, I've seen people with AI tools who tried to do the same thing or use third party tools to do the same thing. And they go and the AI picks out some ridiculous thing to do with the, the person they're sending it to. And it actually has the opposite effect because you're like, what the heck is this? You know, yeah. Uh, or some, you know, they pick up some news from two years ago and you're like, what? So, yeah, yeah I, I think it's like, as you said, be intentional. Don't take shortcuts. Amen. Yeah, well, well said, John. Yeah. Um, so um, so obviously the other part of owned is making sure that there is there is a temptation now because there are so many different channels and platforms um, and it's hard to keep up with everything. So often, you know, you're delegating or you're outsourcing or you're doing this, making sure that there's some consistent, that there's consistency across um, all of the different things that you're doing in, in your in the owned uh, digital marketing is, is critical. But I see that, I see now a lot of times you'll get, you'll get something from a brand and it looks like this in, you know, Instagram, and then you'll get something else over here and it's all kind of incongruous. Oh, that, you know what? That's such a great, great call out. Uh, first of all, I love your warning on AI, right? Like you could, you could do the opposite of what your intention is with AI and, mm. and totally lose people because it's not the right thing. And, and on your point here, it, we're talking about uh, omni-channel alignment. So, yeah. you know, you, you've probably seen these kind of like circles with 17 circles. Look, the truth is there's three things. We talked about owned. Now let's talk about paid. And, and yeah. guess what? what? What John's talking about here, guys, is making sure that your messaging across owned paid and earned is in alignment because mm -hmm. if you don't then people start to question what you're about uh, and you lose trust there again so that alignment is key and in, inside of the paid paid realm you could leverage things from your owned content and you could leverage things from your from your uh, earned content to be able to make a difference with it and so under paid the the, the big tip that I'd like to share with your listeners is that um, is, are most people listening B2B? Is it a mix? Yeah, of mostly B2B, B2B, yeah. B2B? Okay, awesome. Yeah, so, so on the B2B side, the nice thing is that if you're looking to work with paid, here, here's a tip that you're going to love. Uh, LinkedIn works really well. Uh, obviously, the reach is not as, as big as, as Meta. Uh, sure. You know, but what you do is it's a two-step process on paid. You start with LinkedIn ads, targeting your key audience. LinkedIn's great at, at honing in, being very specific about those people. Um, your cold layer with graphics and video, you push it through LinkedIn. But what you do is before you start any campaign on your website, make sure you put your, your meta pixel 
and your LinkedIn insights tag. That's basically a fancy thing to say. It's code that comes from those platforms and it tracks people when they show up. So you're basically sending highly targeted people to your website. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The face, the meta, meta pixel is recording all of this. Cost of acquisition is cheaper on meta than LinkedIn by a factor of 10. Yeah. So, you know, like it could be costing you 20 bucks on, on, uh, on LinkedIn to get a lead while it's going to be $2 on meta. So the secret here guys is start with your cold campaigns on LinkedIn and, and all of your stuff that you retarget, all of your retargeting, you could start retargeting at, at, at the end of the 30 day cycle, that cold layer. Now you're doing meta ads to, to these people, retargeting them for two bucks instead of 20 or mm -hmm. 10 bucks instead of a hundred. Uh, and, and like for really specialty audiences, it gets that high inside of LinkedIn, but you, you, you get more lean and you lower the cost of acquisition by making sure that you're leveraging both of those platforms, start the targeting on LinkedIn and do your retargeting on, on, on meta. And I guess you'd also, you mean, part of what you just said there, you recommend is that you get very, very targeted. And you, you yeah. said like LinkedIn and that allows you to do that, but get very targeted because otherwise you're going to, you could spend a lot of money very quickly and get nowhere. It's, it's far better to, to be ultra targeted. Absolutely. So, so, uh, and to your point, uh, John, you know, when we were talking about email guys, like John mentioned, Hey, get segmented, right? Like, like get segmented. If you're, if you're selling to, to, you know, industrial supplies businesses, make sure that you're focused on industrial supplies that are focused on a particular niche, because that will help you get targeted. Now, now if you go big, uh, and, and get too wide, that's where you could lose. However, if you do get too small and your audience size isn't big enough, mm -hmm. then, then, then you need to broaden it little by little. And it's just, you, you could see that inside of the platform, right? You want to make sure that yeah. you're reaching at least a hundred thousand in a, in a targeted audience, at least, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and then, as you say, I mean, like, you know, religiously like tracking, tracking and analyzing the results and that, because as I said, I mean, the thing about, you know, these paid channels is they can get, they can get out of control pretty quickly if you let them. So you have to be on, you have to be on top of, on top of that spend. And um, let's talk a little bit about earned. Yeah, I love it. And, and by the way, the last thing there, I'll, I'm going to close that chapter and then go to earn. With yep. this it is is like the data is all there on the platforms, but you also can't forget about qualitative information and, and that's screen capture technologies. So if you're paying money to have people go on your site, make sure that the conversions are happening. There's tools like Hotjar yeah. that allow you to see like sessions and they record them. So you understand what, what experience people are having. Um, and so make sure you get that information too. Um, yeah, no, so, I just wanted to just wanted to say on that, um, Saul. Sh um, shout out to Hotjar. We're a customer. Not there. Don't uh, they don't pay us anything to say this? Fantastic product, and believe you me, it cha It has made a massive impact to the interaction on our website by watching those, watching all of those screen recordings of what people. It will shock you. It will. I guarantee you, the first time you use Hotjar, or there's probably other ones too. It will shock you some of the stuff that's going on that you're like, oh, okay, these people are clearly lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's huge. Oh, that's great to know that you use it, John. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's an incredible platform, and there's many others, right? There's like three or four. Microsoft has a version. There's 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 Crazy Egg. It's it's essentially session recording uh, mm -hmm. uh, platforms that will help you take your user experience to the next level, but most importantly in the paid space, make sure that you're getting your money's worth and these people are converting when they hit your site. Yep. Um, cool. Should we move to earned? Yes, please. Love it. So man, I love earned, you know, earn, earn media is all about you getting opportunities. And, and one of the easiest ways to frame it is stages. There's, there's the stages that you get on physically, like conferences, yep. and then there's digital stages like like John's podcast here, which by the way, John, thank you so much for the opportunity to of be course. here to serve you and your audience. I appreciate it. And, and these, these opportunities, guys, are huge because 
you know, you and by the way, I run my own podcast as well. It's called The Outcomes Rocket. It's healthcare focused. Uh, we've done over 1,700 interviews. We know the importance of developing our own stage. That that goes under your own, right? Mm -hmm. We talked about own. But on yeah. earn, you get invited on others. By the way, you're not just going to get invitations out of blue. You have to put it out there and you have to reach out to people intentionally with your key message. And what mm -hmm. I'll share with you, uh, if you're thinking, how can I get out there? You know, so there's podcasts, there's journals. Uh, John, you have your magazine too, right? Like yep. there's there's yeah, there's yeah. Uh, opinion pieces with uh, that you could put out there to showcase your expertise, uh, how you're adding value, why it's different, and why it's relevant today. If you're able to to answer those three questions and how it serves that particular outlet's audience, mm -hmm. you'd be you'd be amazed. And and it goes yeah. back to what we were saying about about uh, about email. Don't send a mass pitch. I mean, you could do that, but if if you really want results. Think about a handful of outlets that you want to impact and, and be aligned with. Reach mm -hmm. out to those outlets with your message. The key here is reach out with your message, make it impactful. Why you tell us about your lived experience, right? What has happened with you that your voice matters in this? And how is it going to value? How is their audience going to value what you're saying as a guest or as a contributing mm -hmm. writer? And then, and then the last thing is, if you find that the outlet is not getting back to you, the sure. best thing that you could do, these folks are busy, right? John, yep. John's a busy man. He's an entrepreneur and he's a publisher. Like I'm impressed by you, John. Um, so, so what you do is give them the courtesy and say, Hey, look, um, I just want to give you one last follow up. Um, if you can get back to me by Friday, uh, of, of this week, uh, that would be great. If not, I'm going to go ahead and offer my story or opportunity to another publisher. Uh, I appreciate it. And, and maybe next time we'll, we'll connect. When, a, when an editor or a publisher or a podcast host sees that, it does create urgency and yeah. it, it helps them say, I'm going to do this or I'm not going to do it. And you'll get your answer. John, what yeah. feedback would you give them on this? Yeah, no, I, I would the same as um, just what you said there, though. I think the key to earned, uh, to earned media is the earned part, right? And I think sometimes people think that, oh, as you said, if I just reach out and say, oh, I'd be a great guest for your podcast. I'm like, well, I don't know who you are. Like, why would you be a great <laughs> guest and all of that? Well, you know, which is fine. I mean, if you can, but the point is the more, the more work you do, I mean, for instance, like, I mean, if you're, if you want to be on someone's podcast, I would suggest that you listen to their podcast. Maybe you actually comment on some of the podcasts and show your interest. Don't, but, but please don't comment. Great podcast. Because I know, <laughs> I know you didn't listen to it when you say that, right? Because so, but, 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 you know, but the whole part of earned is do the earned part. And as you said, if you, if you reach out to a publication or a jur journalist tend to work on tight deadlines, they always seem to be last minute for some reason. Um, and so yeah. you have to be prepared that if, if you build a relationship, they may suddenly say, I need something by end of day today and you're busy. You have to decide that that's worth your while to be able to be reactive to it. So I would say with earned is the, the emphasis should be on the earned part because you have to do some work in order for this to pay, in order for it to come back to you. I love that, John. Yeah. And, and going back to the North Star of our discussion today, yeah. how is earned going to going to lower my cost of acquisition. Well, the the way that it, it, it helps you is you showcase this. If a tree falls in the forest mm -hmm. and you're not close enough to hear it, you're not going to know about it. So once you get published, guys, and you get these opportunities, it's your job to omni-channel, as John mentioned during our call. It, you got to make sure you're sharing it with your email list. You got to make sure you're posting it on social. You got to make sure you're putting it at the bottom of your sales proposals, which you could probably link up in Pipeliner. Can mm -hmm, you? Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Of course. <laughs> um, so, so like, make sure you're sharing it. And here's what happens. There's nothing better than having somebody else tell your story because that's more credible than you or anybody on your, on your team saying it. Um, there's a quote by Bill Gates that, said, that says, if I was down to my last dollar, I'd spend it on public relations. And there's a reason mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree completely. And I mean, the other part of it, too, is obviously if you get if you get your know, featured on a publication or whatever it is, 
you're getting really you you should be getting high value backlinks too so it's it has it's not just getting your message out there as you well know it's also about how it impacts your your search engine optimization as well totally spot on spot on yeah. Well, listen, this has been fantastic, uh, Saul. Maybe just uh, before we go, tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, look, um, we, we focus on healthcare technology companies that struggle getting customers or don't have enough customers to, to get to that scale and growth that they've planned for or they want. And, and, and really, you know, the, the time will come if it hasn't come for you today where you have an opportunity to rise to the occasion of a large opportunity that will change your business. Mm -hmm. If that hasn't happened to you already, then it will happen. And the question is, will you be ready? And a lot of the things that we've discussed actually uh, accrue over time, it's compound. So if you start doing these things effectively over time, when that opportunity comes to you, you will be ready. And the question is, will you be ready and 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 my call to action for everyone is do something today uh for us it's if something today resonated for you we have this thing called a get more customers call if you're doing at least a million dollars in revenue uh or have raised at least five million venture capital reach out to us at outcomesrocket.com forward slash growth and we'll spend 20 minutes with you to help put a quick blueprint together on one of the pillars that we discussed today that will create growth for you, uh, guaranteed. Uh, that's our call to action for everyone. Uh, really, we, we appreciate the time that we've had with you and your audience, John. We really we're yeah. grateful for, for the opportunity. Yeah, no, listen, Saul, great. Uh, thank you so much. I love it when people come on and, and just give as many practical uh, tips and piece of advice that you have packed into this 20 minutes today. So fantastic job. So thank you again, Saul. Thank you for watching, listening.